The annual Chin family dinner at Le Maison d'Or was a celebration of scientific prestige. Crystal glasses caught the light while white-gloved waiters carried plates that cost more than my monthly lab supplies. My sister Victoria adjusted her research director badge while Dad touched his Nobel medallion pin, a reminder of his groundbreaking work in immunology. I checked my phone briefly as another message from my research team lit up the screen. Tomorrow's announcement would transform oncology, but for now I let them bask in their perceived scientific superiority. Still working in that little lab, Rachel? Victoria's voice dripped with false concern. I tucked my phone away, thinking of the revolutionary treatment running through clinical trials. The research is progressing well. Research. Mom sighed, touching her designer glasses. Darling, you had a position waiting at Princeton. Your sister runs the largest cancer research center on the East Coast. Your father won a Nobel Prize. And you're playing with test tubes in a basement. Actually, I'm developing new treatment protocols, I corrected, watching the time. Sixteen hours until the Nobel Committee's announcement. Victoria laughed, her diamond bracelet catching the light. Protocols? Please. Real research happens in major institutions. When was the last time you even published a paper? Last month, actually. Though they didn't need to know it was under a pseudonym to protect our breakthrough. A real journal, Victoria pressed. Not some open access publication. I checked my watch. The final trial results had been certified at midnight. Our work speaks for itself. Of course it does, dear, Mom said with practiced patience. But you had such potential. Victoria's department has a hundred million in funding. At your age I was chairing three research boards. And you're still running experiments in a converted warehouse. Dad adjusted his Nobel pin. The Chin name means something in science. Three generations of breakthrough research. And you're wasting it on whatever it is you're doing. What we're doing is saving lives, I replied quietly, thinking of the patients who'd already been cured. Lives. Victoria snorted. My department saves lives every day. Real research, real trials, real results. How many patients have you even treated? My phone buzzed, another message from Stockholm. Everything was ready. You know, Victoria continued, warming to her favorite topic. There's a junior researcher position open in my lab. Entry level, of course, but at least it's legitimate science. Thank you, but I'm satisfied with my current work. I glanced at the time. The announcement would break in exactly three hours. Satisfied. Dad's voice carried across the restaurant. Chens aren't satisfied with mediocrity. We advance science. We make breakthroughs. We don't waste time on small-scale experiments. The restaurant's manager approached our table nervously. Dr. Chin, there's an urgent call from Stockholm. Tell them I'll call back, Dad waved dismissively. We were just discussing Rachel's career choices. Actually, sir, they're asking for Dr. Rachel Chin. The table fell silent. There must be some mistake, Victoria said quickly. Rachel doesn't deal with the Nobel Committee. She runs a small lab. I stood slowly, smoothing my simple dress. Actually, I deal with them quite frequently. Especially since our cancer treatment showed a 100% success rate in clinical trials. Treatment? What? Dad's prestigious medical journal slipped from his hands. The restaurant's TV suddenly came alive with breaking news. Revolutionary Cancer Cure earns youngest Nobel laureate $18 million prize. While you were all focused on institutional prestige, I continued gathering my things. We were revolutionizing cancer treatment. That little lab you dismissed? It's now the most advanced research facility in the world. But, but you work in a warehouse, Victoria whispered. Yes, developing a cure that just ended cancer as we know it. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a press conference to prepare for. Stockholm is waiting. The press conference room buzzed with anticipation three hours later. Seats that had once hosted scientific luminaries now held reporters from every major news outlet. Through the windows I could see my family arriving, their faces still ashen from dinner. Dr. Chin. My research coordinator appeared with a tablet. The final trial data is ready. Would you like to review it before the announcement? I nodded, scanning the results. While they'd been chasing institutional prestige, we'd been quietly revolutionizing oncology. Every late night in our little lab had brought us closer to what they deemed impossible. Dad entered first, his Nobel pin suddenly looking dated. 
Victoria followed her research director badge seeming insignificant against the breakthrough we'd achieved. Mom clutched her designer handbag, her social standing in the scientific community about to undergo a seismic shift. Let's begin, I announced, taking the podium, a position Dad had dreamed of reclaiming since his own Nobel decades ago. Today marks a new chapter in medical science. The screens behind me lit up with our treatment data. Dad's face tightened as he recognized research he'd dismissed as amateur work years ago. Our breakthrough isn't just another treatment, I continued. It's a complete paradigm shift in how we approach cancer. Victoria shifted uncomfortably as my next slide showed survival rates. Traditional treatments versus our new protocol. The numbers were unprecedented. We've achieved a 100% cure rate across all trial groups, I stated, watching my sister's scientific confidence crumble. More importantly, the treatment is simple, affordable, and can be administered anywhere. Mom's perfectly manicured hands trembled. How many times had she bragged about Victoria's exclusive research facility? Furthermore, I continued, we're making the treatment protocol open source. Every hospital, every clinic anywhere in the world will have access. Dad touched his Nobel pin reflexively. He knew what this meant. This naturally changes the landscape of cancer research, I announced. The traditional approach of expensive, institutionalized treatment is obsolete. We've democratized the cure. But, but major institutions have always. Victoria started. Had a monopoly on breakthrough research? I finished. That ends today. Our data shows better results from our little lab than all major cancer centers combined. The reporters and the world watching via live stream nodded in understanding. They'd seen the results. Questions? I asked knowing there would be many. Dad raised his hand slowly, his scientific authority visibly diminishing. The research methodology is fully documented, I cut in. Every step, every trial, every result verified by independent labs worldwide. Victoria's face flushed. You can't possibly have achieved this in a warehouse. You're just a dash. Just a scientist who cured cancer, I corrected. The treatment works, Victoria. It works better than anything your hundred million dollar lab has ever produced. Mom found her voice. But the Chin research legacy will be stronger than ever, I assured her. Just not in the way you imagined. Our legacy won't be measured in institutional affiliations, but in lives saved all lives, not just those who can afford expensive treatments. The presentation continued for another hour. I outlined the treatment protocol, the mechanism of action, and the implementation strategy. With each detail, I watched my family's scientific worldview shatter. After the conference, Victoria lingered, staring at the survival rate data. These numbers, they're real? Very, I replied, gathering my notes. That little lab you mocked? It just changed medical history. And my research center? We'll need to adapt, I said firmly. Science isn't about prestige anymore, Victoria. It's about results. Dad approached next, fingers still touching his pin. Major institutions have always led medical research. Major institutions have led us to focus on profitable treatments while ignoring simpler solutions, I corrected. That ends now. We're still respected scientists, he protested weakly. And I'm still working in a warehouse, I reminded him. One that just produced the biggest breakthrough since penicillin. Interesting how that worked out, isn't it? Mom tried one last time. The scientific community is already implementing our protocol. I finished. Those experiments you ridiculed? They've revolutionized cancer treatment. Every major hospital is preparing to use our method. The press room slowly emptied, leaving my family staring at the data screens. Their prestigious research world had been upended by the daughter they dismissed as playing with test tubes. The Nobel ceremony is next week in Stockholm, I announced, heading for the door. Don't be late. When, oh, Dad, you might want to update your pin. The new ones say, Chin Cancer Cure Team, I'll have one sent to your office. Six months later, I stood in my expanded research facility, no longer a warehouse, but a gleaming campus dedicated to democratizing medical breakthroughs. The space that had once been mocked as a little lab now housed the world's most innovative research teams, all focused on replicating our approach to other diseases. My phone buzzed, 
Another message from Victoria, her eighth this week. Like the others, it could wait. Family dynamics had become secondary to transforming global healthcare. Dr. Chen, my lead researcher, appeared on the Smart Glass. The global implementation data is in. Cancer mortality rates have dropped 97% in participating countries. I nodded, reviewing the holographic statistics floating before me. Traditional cancer centers were rapidly becoming obsolete. The amateur work had proven what I'd known all along. Breakthrough science didn't need prestigious addresses. Also, she added, your father's research institute requested another meeting about collaboration. Of course they did. Since the Nobel announcement, Dad had been desperately trying to align his work with our methodology. His prestigious facilities now seemed outdated compared to our innovative approach. Schedule them for next month, I decided. After we announced the autoimmune breakthrough, the door opened, admitting Mom in her newly acquired scientific advisory board outfit. Rachel, darling, these results are extraordinary. Just the beginning, I replied, manipulating a molecular model of our next cure. Wait until you see what's coming. She looked at the teams below working with our new methods. We never understood what you were building, did we? No, I said. You cared more about prestige than the future of medicine. Your sister. Mom hesitated. Victoria's center is struggling. Change is hard, I replied. But she's welcome to join our fellowship. The intercom buzzed. Dr. Chin, who is ready for your keynote? In the hall, my family sat with global leaders. Victoria wore a visitor's badge. Dad clutched his old Nobel pin. Let's begin, I said, activating the hologram. Topic. Democratizing medical breakthroughs. Data filled the room. Proof of our success. Old hierarchies held us back. By sharing knowledge freely, we achieved what institutions couldn't. Victoria stopped writing, her achievements fading beside ours. Dad's hands shook as the numbers showed traditional methods failing. Next quarter, I announced, we launched the Global Research Initiative. Free access to our methods for any lab. Mom's calm cracked. She had once mocked my simple work. Questions? I asked. Silence. Then Victoria raised her hand. Yes, Dr. Chin? Your methods. Could you teach me? I want to learn. I saw real curiosity in her eyes. Of course. Science means sharing, collaborating, saving lives. My team smiled at the irony. Afterward, Dad stayed. Rachel, your work is saving more lives than my career ever did. That's why it's free, I said. Science isn't prestige, it's impact. Later in my office I watched researchers build the next breakthrough. Our little lab had become a global beacon. My phone lit up. Chin Protocol Transforms Global Health Care. I smiled, remembering Victoria's old sneer, playing with test tubes. We had changed everything. Open treatments, free protocols, new methods. Tomorrow another breakthrough. Tonight I looked at the lab stronger than any institution. Modern science isn't awards or titles. It's lives saved. By that measure my little lab had changed the world.